Hi, everyone. My name is Duncan McElfresh, and I'm going to be talking today about kidney exchange with inhomogeneous edge existence uncertainty. And uh, this is joint work between some of us at University of Maryland and some at University of Pittsburgh. So first, I want to introduce the problem of kidney exchange. Uh, many people in need of a kidney have willing but incompatible uh, donors, so they're not able to receive a transplant from their donor. Kidney exchange is a process where these uh, incompatible pairs can get together and swap their willing, living, uh, compatible donor, incompatible donors in order to find a compatible match. Um, this is a real process by which about 10% of transplants in the United States are facilitated today. Uh, so mathematically, the kidney exchange clearing problem uh, corresponds to a cycle packing and chain packing on a directed graph. So in this directed graph, we have a vertex for every incompatible patient donor pair. And we have edges where uh, the donor from one node can donate to the patient from another node. Um, in addition, we also have these non-directed donors, which we call NDDs. These are sometimes called altruists. So the solution to a kidney exchange clearing problem um, is a set of cycles and chains, where cycles uh, are exactly what they sound like, directed cycles on this graph. And chains are initiated by an NDD, where they will donate to one pair, which frees up that pair to donate to another pair, and so on. So in practice, this is an, an NP-hard problem, although there are uh, algorithms exist to uh, solve this in a reasonable amount of time. So the problem that we're considering today is edge existence uncertainty in kidney exchange. Um, and so the idea of edge existence uncertainty is that planned transplants can fail for a variety of reasons. And this is a major cause of inefficiency in real exchanges. Um, and these failures can be, say, logistical failures. They could be changes in health due, uh, from the donor or the patient, and so on. Um, and it's important to uh, note that the objective that we choose to optimize um, in kidney exchange uh, has a big impact on the final matching. So just to illustrate, I have a, a, an example exchange over here on the right where these dotted edges are, are somewhat uncertain. We have probabilities of failure associated with each of those. So uh, for example, this uh, two cycle of vertices here, each edge has a weight of 10 and a probability of failure of 0.6. So it's very unlikely that this, this cycle will actually be able to complete, although it has a very high weight. So just to illustrate how the objective determines our outcome, we might decide to maximize uh, the weight of a matching, just the, the simple deterministic weight. So in that case, we would pick this two cycle, which would give us a total weight of 20 in the best case. But the expected weight of this uh, matching is only 3.2, because both of these edges have a fairly high probability of failure. And in the worst case, one of these edges or both of these edges would fail, and we would receive zero weight. So instead, we might decide to maximize the expected weight of a matching. And in that case, we would choose this other two cycle down here in the bottom, um, which would give us a best case weight of seven. Um, but it's fairly likely that one of these uh, edges will fail and we'll get an expected weight of 5.67. And again, in the worst case, one or both of these edges would fail and we would get zero weight. So we might also consider a third objective which is uh, the max min weight matching, or we might call this a robust matching, where we want to maximize the worst case possible weight. And in that case, we would choose this, this uh, NDD edge down here on the left, uh, which has a zero probability of failure, but only a, a weight of one. So in the best case, this matching would give us a weight of 10. Uh, it's expected weight is about half of that, five. And in the worst case, uh, only this deterministic edge with probability of failure zero would execute. And we so we have a worst case weight of one. So part of the trick in uh, designing a kidney exchange algorithm is choosing which objective we want to optimize. <clears throat> so that is uh, one of the problems we're addressing today. Um, our two contributions I'm going to talk about today are uh, first, we propose the first scalable formulation for a conditional variance at risk objective, CBAR which balances the expected outcome with the worst case. Uh, second, we also propose the first scalable formulation for kidney exchange, which maximizes expected weight uh, with an inhomogeneous edge failure probability. 
And I should say that both of these contributions use an edge, inhomogeneous edge failure probability, uh, which is uh, a major step forward from previous work. So I'm going to talk briefly about both of these contributions. Um, first, for CVAR, uh, some of you may know, uh, the main idea of CVAR is we have two competing objectives. On the left here, we have the mean objective, so this would be the mean matching weight. And then on the right here, we have the worst case objective. So we might say the alpha worst case, uh, the alpha percent of, of outcomes, which are the worst case outcomes. We might want to uh, optimize the weight of, or maximize the weight of those. Um, and so due to a result from Rockefeller et al., we can write this objective down in a clever way using this auxiliary variable D, where on the left, again, we have our expected objective, and on the right-hand side, we have our alpha percent of the worst-case objective. And we balance between these two with this uh, parameter gamma, which is chosen by uh, the policymaker. So this is nice, but the main challenge here is evaluating this expected value. Uh, notice there are some nonlinearities here with this positive part um, inside the expected value. Uh, so we can't actually evaluate this uh, efficiently um, in a compact way. So instead, our workaround is to approximate this with sample averaging. And we can write, once we uh, use sample averaging, we can write this as a big uh, MILP. So the main idea with sample averaging is we decide to select a small number of possible outcomes. And then we encode each of those outcomes together into our uh, MILP formulation. And then we can write an approximation for this objective down. Uh, so next, I want to show you some results from our approach. Um, so these set of results just simply show that our, our formulation can actually optimize what we intend it to. So here I'm showing uh, three different methods. First, a stochastic, so a max expected weight method, assuming identical edge failure probability a stochastic objective assuming non-identical edge failure probability, and then our C-bar objective. And the horizontal axis here, what I'm showing, is actually the, the percent improvement for the C-bar objective over a deterministic or a max weight matching. Um, so this is for two different sets of random graphs. Um, and we can see that there's a, a clear and, and fairly strong improvement of using our C-bar approach over uh, these stochastic approaches. So next, I'm going to talk about uh, max expected weight matching with inhomogeneous edge failure probabilities. Um, and the main idea here is that, say we have a, an exchange graph here on the right, and we have uh, several you know, different edge failure probabilities. One, uh, you know, Each edge has a different edge failure probability for the next edge. Um, the main difficulty here is that the actual failure probability of a cycle or chain depends both on the length of the cycle or chain and on which edges the cycler chain consists of. So this turns out to be a, a fairly difficult thing to encode, um, say, in a mixed and linear program, especially because this problem is NP-hard. Um, so we use some clever linearization techniques, and I, I directly direct you to our paper to uh, see those. So just to illustrate the, the benefit of this approach, um, again, I'm showing here three different approaches, the deterministic or max weight objective, the stochastic objective, uh, using identical edge failure probabilities, which is previous work. And then on the far on the right hand side here is uh, our non identical edge failure probability. So this right hand uh, plot is or the, the right hand uh, bar is our approach. Um, and what I'm showing here is the uh, percent of the best possible matched weight. So compared to a, an omniscient approach. Um, and again, we can see a fairly clear improvement um, for of using non identical edge failure probabilities. <clears throat> okay, so just to conclude, um, our work considers edge failures in kidney exchange, and this is a real source of inefficiency in fielded exchanges. Um, we, pr we provide the first scalable formulation for a CVAR objective, which balances uh, the expected matched weight with the worst case matched weight. And then finally, we propose a scalable formulation which maximizes expected weight using inhomogeneous or non-uniform edge failure probabilities. Um, so neither of these things have been done in previous work. Um, thank you for your time.